Balance money or economy system is one of the most important things that you need to know if you want to give yourself the best chance to win game after game. That being said, I know that it can be really complicated. So in this video, let's break down four extremely important takeaways for the economy system and tell you exactly what you need to think about and do every single game as far as money is concerned. Here at Game Leap, we're pumping out double daily uploads. So do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button to jump in on the ground floor of this soon to be huge channel. Now, I think that's enough talking. Let's just jump right into it, shall we? So the first big takeaway that we're going to start here is your money versus the enemy money. What weapons are at different price points and why does it matter? Well, overall, if your team has more money than the enemy, you're going to be able to buy better guns with better effective ranges and have more abilities overall. Now you might be asking, okay, I have a certain amount of money, but why does that matter? Well, there are certain types of guns that are at certain price points. Let me give you this example. Guns like the Guardian and the Vandal have a 50 meter range, which means besides the Marshall, not a lot of guns are going to be able to one shot like these two guns can. Especially when you win the first round, if you buy a gun like the Guardian, you could take an extremely long sight line, and if an enemy pushes it, unless they have a Marshall and they hit a perfect headshot, you could easily duel them. This means having more money than the enemy can directly change exactly how you play points and it should. It can change to angles that you should take and push and can change exactly what points you want to push altogether. If you look and compare your price point against the enemies and you notice that multiple members of the enemy team could potentially buy ops because they have over 4,500 credits, then you really shouldn't be pushing extremely long sidelines because you're going to be pushing directly into the enemy's advantage unless you have strong utility that blocks LOS. This is an incredibly important topic for you to get right. And my example for you is often I'll be holding something like long with the Guardian after we won the first round because the Guardian can one shot headshot from up to 50 meters away and most of the time enemies won't have anything that can contest me at all and I can easily shut them down and get some free picks that way based on my understanding of the economy. Now let's move on to the second thing which is important about economy and this is something that doesn't have to do with money but it's still something that's important for you to understand and it's about ultimate charge. So there's an economy of ultimate charge and it's based on what ultimates does the enemies have or they're close to having and why does that matter for you? Some ultimates deserve an entire strat of push chain when going into the next round. Let me give you this example. One of your favorite ultimates, I'm sure, is Raze's Rocket Launcher right? The ultimate is extremely capable of killing multiple members of your team if you're stacked. So if you're up against Raze's ultimate, you need to change your playstyle completely. If the enemy Sage has ultimate, you need to realize that if she doesn't die early, she can rotate to bodies and resurrect them, which is something that you should really understand. Also, it tells you exactly how many kills they need in order to get to the ultimate. So you can easily track what enemy has ultimate and it can change your playstyle up altogether. Doing something like Sage was two kills away from ultimate, but she just killed two people. So she most likely has it really can change the the dynamic of a 1v1 where it's better to be aggressive against a sage that has ultimate because you don't want to give her the opportunity to resurrect an ally and change a 1v1 into a 2v1 and you could potentially pressure her and kill her when she's trying to resurrect an ally altogether punishing her this is why having essentially free ult tracking before the round is so important and it's really important to keep track of all these things now let's talk about takeaway number three. This is going back to the money, the credit system is tell you exactly how much you get for rounds one and rounds lost and things like that. You get 200 credits if you get a kill. For the first round loss, you only get 1900 credits, but you get a stack of credits depending on if you lose multiple times in a row. If you lose the second time, you get 2400 credits. And if you lose the third time, you get 2900 credits. Now, if you run around, you get a fat 300 credits. So no matter what, Renting a round will always give you more creds than losing a round. And this really matters when we transition to the fourth point, the fourth takeaway on the list is save rounds. When should I save? What is a save round? What does it mean? And why do I even save? Why do I have save rounds? Wouldn't I just buy the best gun every single time, the best gun I could afford? Well, the thing is, understanding what a save round is means that you save because you're already at an inherent disadvantage against the enemy. So instead of investing all your money and having a perpetual situation where you're still not able to buy as good of equipment as guns as them, you take rounds where you intentionally give yourself a less favorable advantage to set yourself up for future rounds. I'm going to break that down a little bit more later, but a big aspect of this is timing your buys with the entire team. When you're in a buy round, you want the entire team to have the best possible equipment because winning the buy round means you get to continuously stack your advantage, saving up money while still keeping as many guns as possible. Rounds where you are in a buy round and you win it convincingly 5-0 means that every single member on your team can keep all their guns while at the same time building up extra money to buy either utility or just save it for future round losses. Now you got to think about, okay, so a save round. So what should I buy during a save round? Should I just buy something that's cheap? 
or should I buy full armor or should I buy my utility? Well, the thing is you need to really think about what happens if you lose your save round. So this is a big problem that I see a lot of people do is they'll lose the first round, right? And the enemies are going to buy those long distance weapons that I talked about. Those guardians, maybe a vandal, different things like that, that have good effective range, more kill potential than your average gun, whatever you're going to buy, the stinger, the pistol or whatever. If you're going into a save round and you're buying full armor and you're buying all your utility, this can greatly mess you up because one, you're already at a huge disadvantage as far as utility and weapons are concerned. So you're probably going to lose the head to head. And two, if you lose again, how much money are you going to gain? We already found out that if you get no kills and you lose the second round, you're going to get 2400 credits. But if you completely spent all your 1900 credits on utility and armor and things like that, then if you lose the preceding round, you're still not going to be able to make those thresholds to buy better guns and full armor. You want to be hitting those thresholds to get your whole team to buy the best guns. Things like the Vandal and the Phantom and full armor. That is what is important because it puts you in a level playing field with the enemy. If you consistently buy subpar weapons every single round in full armor, you could put yourself in a perpetual rut of losing and losing and losing. And that's why unless you absolutely need it and it can flip the matchup, you really need to think hard about how much it's going to cost you to buy a certain amount of utility. Because I see way too many people do things like buy all the utility, buy a decent gun like the Sheriff, and then all of a sudden they lose the next round and they have their utility, sure, but they still can't buy a good gun, and they're going to keep losing matchups again and again. On top of that, when you're playing a save round, you don't want to just play it to lose. Do things that can give you the best chance of winning. Now, this might not be buying things, but you need to be trying to win with the restrictions that you have. Let's say that you all bought the silence pistol, you're all saving, no armor, and you want to give yourself the best chance to actually win the fight. What do you do? Well, you can't take any long sightlines because you don't have a weapon that's capable of fighting the long sightlines. This can greatly change where you route, what you fight, and how you fight. Maybe you need to be playing as a team. Maybe you need to be really trying to funnel in close. Instead of pushing long, you could be pushing short or mix things up. Understanding the strengths and weaknesses of the weapons you have, what the enemy's money means for them and how you can play around it, and understand why you should really hard save instead of doing these things where you buy armor and utility and then lose the fight anyways. That could be a way that you really utilize economy to your advantage and you use it to help your game instead of actively putting yourself in situations where you're in a cycle of losses that chain into more losses over and over again. You get one loss, one loss turns into two, three, four losses. And by the time you finally flip it around, the enemy has won so many that they essentially have infinite money and they could just go buy ops or vandals or perfect setups. And then it's just going to be a really hard game going forward. This is why it's so important for you to understand the economy of ultimates and the economy of money in this game. Anyways, if you like this video and you want to see more, do yourself a favor and smash that subscribe button because Game Leap Valorant is going to be pushing out double daily uploads and all of it's going to be high quality advanced stuff just like this. And if you want to see more high quality advanced videos like this one, like my peaking video that I talked about before, definitely let me know in the comments down below and any other concepts that you want me to cover. Please let me know so I can get right on it. That's all I have for you today. I'm Coach Mills, and until next time,